This is Maria and Maria and we are now going to tell you about George Washington. George Washington was the first president of the United States of America. He served as president from April 1789 until March 1797. His vice president was John Adams, who was later voted the second president of the USA. Important events that happened during George Washington's lifetime was the French and Indian War, the Revolutionary War, and the US Constitution. George Washington was born on February 22, 1732, in Westmoreland County, Virginia. Washington's father died when George was only 11 years old. He had very little formal schooling, but thought himself to be an expert woodsman, surveyor, and a map maker. In 1758, Washington was elected to the House of Burgesses in Virginia, he was also a member of the Continental Congress from 1774 to 75, and he was a chairman of the Constitutional Convention from 1787 to 88. He aligned himself with members of the Federal Party. Washington believed that shaking hands was beneath the president, so he always bowed to his visitors. Washington married Martha Custis in 1759. Martha was a rich widow who had two children, Martha Patsy and John Jackie. Their home in Virginia was called Mount Vernon. George and Martha did not have children together. Washington died on December 14, 1799, at his home, Mount Vernon, located in Fairfax County, Virginia. After his death, the nation's capital was moved from Philadelphia to a location on the border of Virginia and Maryland near Washington's home and was named Washington, District of Columbia, in his honor. Amen to that. As young men, Washington joined the Virginia military. He and six men traveled 500 miles north to the shores of Lake Ariel to deliver a message to the French. The French were ordered to stop settling land that was claimed by the British. This land dispute led to a battle in which Washington and 160 men lost to the French. This was the beginning of the French and Indian War. The British and the colonists fought the French and some Indian tribes. After many heroic battles, Washington became a colonel and the leader of Virginia's military. The British eventually won the French and Indian War. In the 1750s, Britain and France had colonies in North America. The British wanted to settle in the Ohio River Valley and to trade with the Native Americans who lived there. The French built forts to protect their trade with the Indians. In 1754, George Washington led an army against the French, but he was defeated. Britain declared war on France. The war for control of the valley was called the French and Indian War. Most American Indians in the region were allies of the French. The American Indians liked the French because they traded but did not settle on the land. In 1754, a Congress of the British colonies met in Albany, New York. Benjamin Franklin thought the colonies should work together to defeat France. Each colony would still have its own government, but they would also create one government together to decide important issues. His idea was called the Albany Plan of Union. The colonists rejected it. They did not want to join together under one government. In 1757, Britain sent more soldiers to North America. 
This helped defeat the French in Canada. In 1763, Britain and France ended the war and signed the Treaty of Paris. France gave Britain control of Canada and most of the land east of the Mississippi River. British soldiers stayed in the Ohio River Valley. The Indians wanted the soldiers to leave. An Ottawa chief named Pontiac led the Indians in a war against the British. This was called Pontiac's Rebellion. The British defeated the Indians in less than a year. To avoid more conflict with American Indians, Britain made the proclamation of 1763. It recognized Indians' rights uh, to, be, to the land. It did not allow colonists west of Appalachian Mountains, and the colonists were angry. They didn't want the British soldiers to live among them. In order to pay for the expensive French and Indian War, the British taxed the colonists, angering them. In Boston, the colonists revolted, dumping precious tea into Boston Harbor. This event is called the Harbor Tea Party. In 1775, Washington was chosen as the commander-in-chief of the colonial army. In 1776, the colonists declared their independence from the British. General Washington led the ragtag Patriot troops who were poorly trained, barely paid, badly equipped and outnumbered by the British. Patriot women like Molly Pitcher often helped out on the battlefields carrying pitchers of water to cool down the cannons so they could be refired and also nursing the wounded. Due to brilliant planning of George Washington and some help from the French late in the war, the British were defeated in 1781 after many bloody battles. The Americans were now independent from the British. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the USA. The Constitution guides American society in law and political culture. It is the oldest charter of supreme law in continuous use and it influenced later international figures establishing national constitutions. Recent impulses for reform center of concerns to extending democracy and balancing uh, the federal budget. After independence, the Americans were governed under the Articles of Confederation, who was adopted by the Patriots in 1777, but the country still struggled. In 1787, Washington proceeded over the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, during which the U.S. Constitution was written. The U.S. Constitution outlined a representative government with checks and balances among three branches of government. The executive, the president, the legislative branch, lawmakers, and the judicial branch, judges and courts. The Constitution was ratified in 1788. It went into effect in 1789. The next step was to set up this new revolutionary form of government. Washington was the oldest son of his father's second marriage. He grew up with nine brothers and sisters. When George was three years old, his family moved to a large tobacco plantation, which they called Mount Vernon. Despite his lengthy travels and many temporary homes, George considered Mount Vernon to be his true home until the day he died. Though he believed strongly in virtues of education, his own schooling ended at the age of 14. This is a fact that haunted Washington throughout his life, even though this was not uncommon in his day and age. George joined the British Royal Navy at age 14. Once during battle, a cannonball almost hit him and his men. Everyone hid except George, who kept on fighting. By the time he was President of the United States, George only had one original tooth left. 
He spent the rest of his life in constant pain from ill-feeling dentures that distorted the shape of his mouth. George first set of dentures were made from cow's teeth. Later, he had a second pair made of hippopotamus ivory. His favorite food were pineapples and Brazil nuts. It was said by John Adams that George lost all his teeth by cracking Brazil nuts between his jaws. George never had any children of his own, though his wife Martha had two from a previous marriage. He is the only president in history to have been anonymously elected, receiving all 69 votes of the Electoral College. At the time, there was no popular vote for presidency. He was the only president who did not live in Washington, D.C. Contrary to pop popular belief, George Washington never wore a wig. Washington gave his name to one U.S. state, one capital city, 33 counties, seven mountains, nine colleges, and 161 post offices. George Washington is the only one of America's founding fathers to free his slaves. He freed all 124 of his slaves in his will and left enough money in his estate to care for all of them for decades after his death. According to Newsweek, 14% of all preschool children think George Washington is still sitting in the Oval Office. That's all, Fox. Toodles! <laughs>